this on the x or the y axis to um, get it into position. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and scale back up so that it's just about maybe a little bit bigger. Well, I'm trying to get the tires to match um, the tires in the actual photo to get this uh, perspective right here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Scale this up just a little bit more. Slide it back. Okay, now I'm going to want to repeat this uh, snap object to ground plane to make sure that the car is resting directly onto the ground plane. This is going to be important for uh, shadows when I want to add shadows later. Um, now what I want to do is actually slide this along uh, the red and the green or the X and the Y axes here, the object. Uh, with this 3D axis widget, you can actually slide uh, planar movement. So notice when I place my cursor between any two axes, I get that two-headed arrow. And also, um, the square shows up between the two different axes. And I can slide this. I can do planar movements, um, slide this along two different axes. So what I want to do is get this right between uh, the red and the green um, axes. You can't see the visualization there, but I'm going to go ahead and do some planar um, sliding here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then once again, I'm going to scale down just so it's a little bit more realistic. And check the snap object to ground plane. And you can see that it just shifts a little bit, and that's fine. Um, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is save the position of this object by, again, going to the options bar of the 3D object tool this time and save the current view. OK, now that I more or less have the position um, of the car where I want it, I'm going to clean up the image a little bit. I have a couple of um, mergers or outliers here that I want to clean up. So for now, I'm going to turn off the 3D object layer um, and scroll back down to that first background layer. And I'm going to go ahead and use Content Aware Fill, this great new feature in Photoshop CS5, to very quickly um, remove um, these artifacts. So what I'm doing is using the lasso tool here, making a very quick selection, doing Shift Delete, because I'm not on a background layer, but I'm on an actual layer, uh, to bring up the Fill dialog and choose Content Aware Fill. You can see how quickly I can actually clean up this image. I'm going to go ahead and use my spot healing brush here and do the same thing to remove this wire. So with my spot healing brush, I actually have content aware options selected here um, in the options bar. So I could um, remove these um, things that I want to get rid of in the image. Enlarge my brush a little bit and use the spot healing brush with the content aware fill option to get rid of this lamp post. Hmm, did a pretty good job. Not going to be perfect here. Um, let's go ahead and just get rid of some of the obvious things. Notice that when I decreased the size of the brush here, it did a better job on these lamp posts. Um, Content or fill actually uses the diameter of the um, of the um, brush to determine how far out they want to fill in with pixels. So what Content or fill is doing is filling in uh, pixels with respect to what's happening in the environment, and that's why you get better results sometimes when you work with a smaller brush rather than a larger brush. Also, Content or fill has a uh, random factor, so if you want to retry the same type of um, correction again, you might get different results or better results. OK, that looks good. Um, the next thing I want to do is get rid of this car on the side. And again. OK, 
Um, take my brush and clean this up a little. I'll go through and uh, clean this up a little bit more later. We don't need to do this now. Um, but the next thing that's really uh, bothering me about this image is the fact that you get a little bit of geometric distortion. I, sh I, I stitch these images together. There's actually a slight curve to this building. And that's why um, you can see that when I stitched it together, this, this horizontal line here is really crooked. And I want to fix for that just a little bit. And we also have this really great new feature that allows you to do that easily, and that's Puppet Warp. Um, if I have that layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and choose Edit, Puppet Warp. And you can see that um, by default we draw a mesh over the image. And for this project, I'm actually going to um, uh, have it be a tighter mesh or a mesh containing more points so I get a little bit more precision. And I'm going to go ahead and just drop some pins here. The pins serve as anchor points or as handles from which I can click and pull the image, kind of like a canvas, and the other pins will essentially freeze that area. So you can see that I can click through here and kind of uh, straighten up this image just a little bit, not too much. Okay, I think that's actually pretty good it just a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and say okay for now. That looks a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and crop it just a little bit because I don't need all these, um, this side here of the sign. Crop that out just a little and then use my magic wand tool and select the transparent areas. Again, shift delete for content or fill and that's going to fill in the edges, uh, fill in that space with respect to what's happening in the environment. Okay, it did a okay job. I can use my brush tool here and clean that up just a little bit more. Okay, uh, lastly, let's go ahead and remove this garbage can. And use my clone stamp tool and just very quickly fix for this there. Great. All right, that looks pretty good. Now remember to save your um, document that you're working on as well. We haven't done that yet through this tutorial. I'm going to go back up here and turn on my 3D object. Okay, that looks much better. And let's go ahead and start adjusting for the lights. Now um, in my 3D panel on the far right, I'm going to go ahead and choose this fourth filter filter by lights and these are going to show me all the different lights that are contained in my object. Now for, for, for this particular file I actually only have uh, two infinite lights showing. Uh, where are these infinite lights? Well let's go ahead and turn on my 3D uh, light widgets. I'm going to select a light rotation tool and click on 3D light for overlays and you can see that these are my two infinite lights. I have a handle um, that I can grab onto and rotate the light. And also, it's hard to see, but there's a little arrow indicating uh, which direction the light is pointing in. Okay? The second infinite light here, if I select it, is actually this one here where it's pointing from the bottom up. I don't really need that on, so I'm going to turn that off and adjust this infinite light so that it's pointing straight down. Okay? Infinite lights can be thought of as uh, sunlight, so you can think of um, it has no beginning and no end. It nearly um, um, has a directional aspect to it. So I'm going to point that down so it's going straight uh, horizontally down, pointing downwards. Okay, maybe I can have it a little angled a little bit towards the back. Okay. The next thing I want to do is add an image-based light. In Photoshop CS5 Extended, we've added this great new ability to use an image as your light source and essentially wrap that around your 3D scene. Okay, it's best to use 32-bit um, HDR, preferably images, so you get the most a range um, of, of light, as well as the fact that our ray tracer actually renders in 32-bit, so you get the best results. Uh, but you don't have to do that. Um, it's, it's just a best practice. So let's go ahead and add an image-based light. An image-based light is really cool because you can not, not only use uh, it to uh, light your scene, but you can also use it as an environment map from which you can actually get some reflections off your 3D object. 
So I'm going to choose in my 3D Lights panel at the bottom again, this middle menu, choose New Image Based Light. And by default, we actually take a white 